Okay, well, I think it looks like the attendees have uh, slowed down. It's kind of been stopped at about 100 for a little bit. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get started with introductions. Um, so welcome and thank you for attending our session today about your transfer credit uh, at Channel Islands. And we're joining you from the registrar's office. So we'll go ahead and take a moment to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Colleen Forrest. I'm the associate registrar within the registrar's office. Hi, sorry, I was trying to answer a question in the chat. Um, my name is Rachel Danielson and I'm the assistant registrar at Channel Islands. My name is Melissa Silva and I'm an academic evaluation specialist and special population specialist. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. And then just first, just to kind of give you an overview of what we're gonna cover today. Um, so as new transfer students enrolling in your first semester at Channel Islands, you're likely gonna be enrolling in classes that have prerequisites. And these pre prerequisites are probably something that you've already completed at your community college or a previous school. Uh, so receiving your transcripts and getting your transfer credit posted to your record here at Channel Islands is really what helps pave the way to having a smooth enrollment experience for your first semester. So our goal today is to help you understand the entire evaluation process um, and how evaluation decisions are made. We also with some of the terms we use when we talk about evaluations. Then we'll also take a more detailed look at your transfer credit tools. So we'll look at your transfer credit report, your advising report. Um, and then we also wanna provide you with some guidance on how to navigate prerequisites, right? And how to resolve any potential prerequisite issues that you might have when you register for your first term at Channel Islands. Let me just make sure I can, there we go. Um, so next we just want to talk about like the journey that your transcript takes once it gets here to Channel Islands. So it doesn't just arrive and everything is posted and evaluated. There's a lot of steps involved. So once we receive your transcript, the first step is to get all that data from your transcript entered into our student information system, which we refer to as CI records. Um, it's then preliminarily posted to your record. So the data is entered, we run a process to just post it to your record and it becomes visible to you. So you very likely may have already looked at your transfer credit report or looked at your transfer credit that's been posted already. Um, however, at this point, the courses have not yet been reviewed by an evaluator. So an evaluator hasn't gone through every single course to make sure that articulation is there or that all the course equivalencies are, are there. It's simply just the raw data from your transcript and it may look messy or maybe not quite correct if you're viewing your transfer credit right now. So once we get all that data inputted, next your transcript gets to go to the admissions office. And admissions evaluators, really, they're just reviewing your transcripts to make sure that you've met your admission requirements. So if you're an upper division transfer, they're just verifying that you have your 60 units, your golden four and your 2.0. And then once your admissions is cleared, now your record goes over to the registrar's office. And this is where our evaluations team is gonna go through course by course and make sure that we're giving all the credit that we can possible. Any course equivalencies, any general education credit, um, any graduation requirement credit that we can give you, that's what's gonna happen in the registrar's office. So just an overview of the timeline on evaluations. Uh, they're done in date order, so that makes sense. So the earlier you sent us your transcripts, the sooner an evaluation will be completed. So evaluations are ongoing through January. So even though you're gonna be enrolling in just a couple of weeks, we're not gonna have a full evaluation for you right now, uh, but we will have a full evaluation before the start of the spring semester. Uh, so just knowing that when you go to orientation, when you're enrolling for your classes for spring, what we are gonna do is any review, right? So we are going to look at everybody to look for those key prerequisite courses. So if you're, let's say you're an incoming psychology major, we're going to be looking for your statistics, your intro to psych, and make sure that those courses are there in order to clear prerequisites for those upper division courses that you may be enrolling in. So while your transfer credit may not look fully evaluated or fully complete, or maybe something's missing from your GE, just know that our goal for you within the next couple of weeks is to make sure that you are able to enroll in the classes that you need for your major and to hopefully have a smooth experience enrolling. But unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to have 
a clean transfer credit evaluation for you by the time you come to orientation. So what exactly goes into an evaluation decision? There's actually a lot of, um, there's a lot of resources for us to use and a lot of resources for you to use. So um, the first step is articulation. So we have an articulation office and they work with the faculty and the community colleges to determine course equivalencies that become agreements. So once those decisions are made, it's considered an agreement between CSU Channel Islands and the community college. And that information is available publicly through assist.org. So you may be very familiar with assist, but anything that's in assist, if you took that coursework and you see that it's in assist, that should just come over automatically. It's not going to be, it's not really a judgment call that decision's already been made. And for the most part, it is just gonna post automatically to your record here. Um, so for colleges that don't have articulation agreements, so let's say other four-year universities, uh, private institutions or out-of-state colleges. This is where I, our evaluators really need to read the course descriptions and determine if they can make a course equivalency, uh, get, uh, give it GE credit or give it other credit that can be awarded. So most often, obviously, we're looking for those course equivalencies, especially if you're trying to meet major requirements. Um, but we do have some criteria that needs to be met before we can make like the, those kinds of decisions. If we're unable to make those decisions for like a course equivalency, but let's say you feel like, no, I really met this general psych course and I feel it should be meeting psych 100 at Channel Islands. Um, there is a course substitution process where a faculty can review the request and make a decision to approve or deny a course substitution. And later in this presentation, Melissa is gonna talk more in detail about the course substitution process. So this is something to keep in mind when let's say you do get your email that you've had a full evaluation, but you feel there's more credit that you should be receiving. This is when you really wanna look into the course substitution process for additional course equivalencies. So what exactly happens during an evaluation? Uh, so once your admission requirements has been cleared, your record is pulled over to the registrar's office and we pull a list once a week of students who have been cleared by admissions. And then these records are in date order. So again, the earlier you sent those transcripts and kind of cleared your admission, then that the sooner we can get to your file. Um, so evaluator is gonna look at all the detail and make as many possible updates as we can. So for example, um, again, the course equivalencies, we're gonna, if you took a general psych course, we wanna give it psych 100. If you took uh, an economics course, we wanna give it the specific, if it's microeconomics, macroeconomics, give those specific course equivalencies. We're also looking for general education credit and we can, without a course equivalency, we can make it meet a certain GE area. Um, additionally, we have a couple of graduation requirements that you'll learn about with your advisors. And many times you will meet those requirements with community college courses. So we're also looking for credit that we can give you towards graduation requirements. So if you took something that can't be applied to one of those con specific content areas, but it's still a considered a baccalaureate level course and it's transferable, we will at least give you elective credit. So um, that will be reflected in your transfer credit as well. And something to note about if you're coming from the two-year community colleges, there is a maximum amount of units that you can transfer from the community college, which we'll cover more in detail later, but that cap is 70. And just a kind of a clarification, let's say you took 90 units at the community college, we're still gonna bring over all that content, we're gonna still bring over all those courses, but only 70 units are gonna be applied towards your graduation total, which is 120 units. So again, we'll talk about that more in um, detail later on, but that's just a good point to remember if you're a transfer student. So once your evaluation is completed, we do send you an email and you'll be notified. Um, and again, we'll cover more. There's other ways that we notify you as well. We'll update some messages within CI records in your advisement report, and we'll have more details about that later in this presentation. So what I'm gonna do now is we are gonna get more into the detail. So I'm gonna hand it over to Rachel, and first she's gonna cover some terms that you may hear, some evaluation terms, and then she's also gonna view um, the different places you can view your transfer credit within CI records. Hi, everyone. Um, before we uh, move on, did we want to address some of the questions in chat? Um, 
just so I don't lose any of them. Um, but I also want to remind everyone that there is a Q&A option at the end. So if you um, your question gets missed accidentally or we don't address a question that you have, please um, know that we do have time saved at the end to do that. Um, but there I've, I've answered a few of them, but a common one that I see coming through is if you are currently enrolled in something, um, is there a deadline to send that transcript? And please correct me if I'm wrong, Colleen, Melissa, um, in terms of your admission status, that's separate. Um, but as soon as you get the grade for those classes or class, um, please send us an updated official transcript so that we can get that credit added onto your record. But there's no specific deadline now that you've met your uh, admissions deadlines. Um, and then I just wanted to scroll through real quick. Um, and it is official transcripts. Somebody asked what kind they should be. They need to be official. Um, I mean, if your school offers an electronic option, that's great. Um, or hard copy, they have to remain sealed. Um, there was a question about an additional unit authorization. All students are eligible for an additional unit authorization, but it has to be approved by um, an advisor or a faculty member. It, um, it can't just be student signature. So the directions are on the form. If you're curious, um, if you have any more questions, you can always email the registrar's office. Our email address is also on the form. Um, and for those who may not know, the additional unit authorization form just allows an undergraduate student to take a certain amount of units beyond the automatically allowed 18. So say you wanted to take 20, that could possibly be an option for you. Um, I'm going to move on for now. And then if I didn't get to your question, please bring it back up at the end, but I don't want to um, hang everything up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So Colleen mentioned, um, there's gonna be a lot of terms that you're going to hear in reference to the transfer credit evaluation process. Um, and when we wanted to give you a bit more context because you know, we, we tend to hear the same terms over and over again, but you may not have heard these terms yet. So um, shortly after receiving your transcript, your, your coursework is uploaded into our system and, and posted. But this means that you can see your transfer credit, but it may not necessarily look the way you expect it to yet. Um, if you run your car, you're going to notice a, a notice at the top and you'll see it in that screenshot that just lets you know that um, we that, that one basically means we got your transcript and that preliminary post has happened and that you will be notified when your official evaluation has taken place. Um, so we call that an unofficial evaluation. And then transferability can sometimes be confusing. Um, what we mean by transferability in the registrar's office is that it's baccalaureate level, you know, it's not a remedial class and that it's not a repeat of something you've already taken. So it's, it's basically units that we can accept. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to meet a specific Channel Islands course, but it does mean that you, know, you earn those units and you get to, you get to keep those. Um, you're also gonna hear articulated a lot and basically what that means is that course to course equivalency. So for example, if you took Psych M01 at Moore Park College, we know that course, we love that course, we see it all the time. It's Psych 100 at Channel Islands and we're gonna be able to give you that credit up front. You know, you're not gonna have to fill out any extra requests or paperwork or substitutions or anything like that. So that's what an articulation means. It's, it allows us in the registrar's office to give you automatic credit for the Channel Islands equivalent. Next, please. All right, so again, the, uh, the registrar's office evaluators review your credit for any possible updates that we can make. So if you took something that cannot be applied to a specific area, maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't count for a specific GE or your foreign language, or maybe it can't count in your major, but it's still transferable, it's still baccalaureate level, um, we'll designate it as elective credit. 
but a great resource that you guys can use on your own if you haven't already is assist.org. Um, make sure you look up the course for the year in which you took it. So when you go to assist, there's a drop down menu with like the academic years. That's what we go by in the registrar's office. So just make sure you choose that one when you're looking up to see if a course can count for um, any of your degree requirements. And then once an official evaluation has been completed by one of our evaluators, the notice box that we saw on the last screen will update to the one you see here and let you know that an official evaluation has been completed. Excuse me, so it's at this time, if you see something that doesn't look correct, you get that email from our office, you see that notification update, and, and still something looks kind of, you're like, oh, I really think, you know, this should be this, then please reach out to us, email us, and we'll check it out for you. Next, please. All right, so there are three main places that you can check your transfer credit report within CI records, um, and I'll go over those individually uh, in the next slides, but you have a transfer credit report. That's just kind of what it sounds like. It's all your transfer credit, including any um, institutions uh, or any test credit you may have earned. Your CAR, which is, stands for the CI Academic Requirements Report. It's where um, you're gonna see everything from your GE all the way down to your major and if you've declared any minors. And then course history combines your transfer credit with um, whatever you end up taking at Channel Island. And again, all of these are found in CI records within your student center. And then next I'll go over the transfer credit report. So the easiest way to get to all three of these is in your My Academics tab. So when you're in your student center, you can click on My Academics. It's available also in the drop down menu. So if you've been in your student center, there's a, in the upper left hand corner, uh, there's a drop down menu. So that's an all there's a way you can get to it as well. But you can see um, academic requirements in the red box. That one is the car that I referred to with all of your GE down to major requirements. Transfer credit, that link is gonna be just your transfer credit, any test credit. And then course history is that one that combines Channel Islands and your test credit or and community college credit or other university credit all together. And then next please. So, um, more detail on the transfer credit report because this is where we want you guys to be um, looking and, and, and considering prior to your registration beginning. So at the top, you'll see any institution. This student brought in 72.5 units from Moore Park College, but as Colleen mentioned earlier, there is a 70 unit maximum from community colleges. And I want to just clarify that is um, towards the 120 overall units that each undergraduate student has to earn. It doesn't mean that we're just gonna, you know, cut you off at the knees at 70 and say that 2.5 was were the class you took to meet your GE area E and we're like, well, too bad you don't have GE area E. That's, that's not how it works. So it's just in complete reference to that overall 120. Is, is where that maximum applies. So if you take 100 units and your, you know, your last three are what you need for your foreign language, you're going to meet the content and, and the requirement and all of that. We're not gonna um, just you know, snatch that away from you. So there is no maximum, however, for another four-year institution. Um, so it's just in reference to those two-year institutions. And then if you scroll down, um, just from the previous screenshot is where the detail lives. So on that left-hand side, you'll see the transfer institution information. Um, like I said, term that you took a class, the class title, class name, units, grades, all of that good stuff. And then on the right-hand side, if we pop over to the next slide, please, Colleen. Um, wanted to highlight the credit that we give here at Channel Islands. So, the top arrow you'll see um, had a direct course articulation. So math M15 at Moore Park. Again, that's one of those we know and love and we see all the time. And so we give it math 202 here at Channel Islands. And you don't have to do anything extra to get us to do that. Um, 
So we'll go to number two, GE designation. So you see down toward the bottom, film M10 is eligible for GE C1 arts credit. So we, you know, maybe we don't have a class at Channel Islands that's quite the same. Maybe faculty haven't decided that something is quite the same yet, but we are able to give you GE area credit um, to go towards your degree. And then the last example is that number three, and it's the middle arrow, so straight over, um, a kinesiology class, the lab portion. It's not eligible for any particular GE area. Um, we're not able to give it any specific Channel Islands credit, but it is baccalaureate. You know, you took it, you earned it, you get to keep it, but it's just elective credit in your record. All right. So that second place I talked about um, where you can see um, how your credit is being applied is that CAR, the CI Academic Requirements Report. And again, we've highlighted at the top um, what you'll likely see right now that the preliminary evaluation has been completed, which is simply we've retrieved your credit that you submitted to us and we've put it on your record. But it's pretty raw right now. So again, keep that in mind. And then, um, but once you see things starting to be applied, you'll notice changes in your car. So for this particular student, um, at the top, you'll see general education and to the right of that is a green circle. That means that the student, um, previous one, Colleen? Thank you, sorry. That means that the student's GE is completely met. If we were to expand that, we would see the individual classes that were, um, you know, their A1, their, you know, their English composition, their critical thinking, all of that stuff, all the detail would be there. The green circle anywhere in your car lets you know that you've met that requirement. Toward the bottom of this screenshot, you'll see that yellow diamond. Again, this student is currently enrolled in a class to count for one of their upper division GEs at Channel Islands. So yellow lets you know something's in progress. And then finally, the red boxes will let you know what is still missing. And then this is a similar um, screenshot, but I wanted to show you what a major looks like as well. So um, you'll see again at the top, that red square lets you know that the entire major of itself isn't, isn't done yet. But within the major, the student has met all of their lower division requirements. So you can see Psych 100, 202, 213, those all have the green circles, so the student's good to go on those classes. Um, in their upper division requirements, they're currently enrolled in one of those classes. So this is sort of an easy visual way for you to um, keep an eye out on what you still need to take. And then the third place I talked about earlier was course history, where um, it merges all of your transfer credit and anything you have at Channel Islands. Um, this is also a great place to see if uh, the evaluators were able to give you what we call designators. So, for example, you see that art class um, was given the multicultural requirement. We want to be able to give you um, direct course to course equivalencies when we can, but sometimes there's maybe extra attributes extra features of a class that you've earned by virtue of taking that class that we want to make sure you don't miss out on. So we can put those designators on there. Same thing with that ASL, American Sign Language, that's eligible for your language requirements. So we want to make sure that you get credit for those things. So if you see a designator on there, that's what that means. We're just identifying it as meeting a certain area of your degree requirements. So let me just make sure I did not forget anything. Um, I think that is it for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Melissa to give you a bit more detail and then walk you through um, pre the information. Let's see. What may be missing right now? Um, so when you look at your car or your transfer credit report, 
there are some things that are going to be missing right now. Don't freak out. So right now you should primarily focus on having the prerequisites that you need to enroll in your classes for when your enrollment appointment comes up. So everything else is going to be added during your evaluation. So that includes your language, multicultural, um, anything else that wasn't correctly placed by the system. So any major articulations, minor articulations, or anything that basically we um, that you see is missing, we'll add that in once we're evaluating your transfer credit. Sometimes the automated system will bring over a class and it only gives it LDT. You'll see that as like lower division credit or upper division credit or GE credit. And it might even show something as rejected through assist. Um, even, though, uh, even though assist lists it as, as transferable, you might see it as rejected. So those are the things that you might be seeing right now because your transfer credit has not been evaluated. We will be making these updates manually. So we'll be going through your transfer credit and checking on any missing articulations and going through your prerequisites for when your registration comes up. So um, on checking for your prerequisite. So prerequisite is a course or condition that must be met prior to registering for a specific course. So once your appointment time begins, you may begin, um, you may begin validating your courses through your shopping cart validation and CI records. So once you're in CI records, you'll then add classes onto your shopping cart and then select the validate option. So you can see in this screenshot, this is what it's going to look like once you're in your shopping cart and you select your classes, you add them in. You want to make sure that you select that little checkbox that says select. And then what you're going to do is hit that little validate button. And what that's going to tell you is it's going to let you know if there are any prerequisite issues, if there's anything that you need to address before your enrollment appointment pops up. So it's kind of like a, a pre thing. So you know that you're either good to go or maybe you need to contact us and then we can update something in the system for you so that you're ready to go for when your time comes up. So um, just make sure that you check those boxes and that you hit that validate button when your shopping cart validation appointment starts. So once you've clicked through validating the courses, this is what you're gonna see. You're either gonna see a green check mark, which means you're good to go to add that class whenever your enrollment appointment time comes up or you're gonna see a red X. A red X means that um, there are some prerequisite errors. It will give you a brief description under the message to let you know what it is. So let's see, in this example, you'll see that the prerequisite error for Psych 202, um, for Psych 300 is Psych 202 and upper division standing or consent of the instructor. So what this means is that both Psych 202 and upper division standing are needed to be satisfied in order to enroll in that Psych 300 class. If you don't meet both of these prerequisites, you'll need to have the instructor consent, which means that you need to contact the instructor for permission to add the class because you don't have the prerequisites satisfied. So some of the common prerequisite errors that we see um, are class standing. So you'll see this if um, you're getting a, an upper division standing error. So upper division standing means that you need to have at least 60 units completed. It doesn't include any in progress coursework. So the classes need to be completed. Um, another prerequisite error commonly seen is specific prereq required. So this means that the system is looking for a specific prerequisite course that's shown in the catalog. So even if you've taken a different course that may look similar or higher level of the course, the system will only look for that specific prerequisite. Um, department consent um, or instructor consent, it just means that you need to contact the instructor um, in order to add that class. Reserve capacity is another one. This means that the department has chosen to reserve seating for like a specific major or a program. We do recommend that you find an alternate course to fit your schedule, but you can always contact Academic Advising for Assistance with course selection. You can contact the program for more information on that reserve seating or to check, um, you can also keep checking to see when those seats become available. Time conflict is also another one. So in the screenshot, you'll see that one of the errors is a time conflict error. That's for Psych 313 in the screenshot. This means that there's a time conflict with a different class that you've added. 
So it's recommended that you do enroll in an alternate section that doesn't have a time conflict. However, with spring 21 being mainly virtual, some of your classes may be asynchronous, meaning they don't necessarily have set meeting times, but the system may, may give you an error, a time conflict error. We have a time conflict form for students still wishing to add both classes. The request is not, um, does need approval from the instructor of each course. So as long as your instructors consent to you adding the class, you can email the time conflict form with their approvals to our email address, and then we'll get that um, sorted for you. So once you've gone through the validation process, your next step is to review your transfer credit report or your course history to make sure that you've received the direct articulation needed to, make, um, to meet the prerequisite. So in the previous screenshot, you saw that the error mentioned for um, Psych 300 was Psych 202. You'll want to review that right-hand column of your transfer credit report to check to see if you were given that credit for Psych 202 because we need that. Assist.org is one of the sites we use when we evaluate transfer credit. So we do recommend that you check this site for possible articulations. If you see an articulation on Assist, but it's not in your transfer credit report, please reach out to us. Um, so continuing with that Psych 202 example, Let's say, for example, that you took a math class at your community college and it articulates to Psych 202 on assist, but in your transfer credit report, you see it showing up as Math 201 or you see it showing up as just a GE. You can go ahead and email us and let us know, hey, this articulation's on assist, I see it here, and then we will go ahead and make that update to your transfer credit report. So as Rachel also mentioned before, Articulations and assist are the ones that we can update for you without any documentation. So just send us an email. If you don't see an articulation or you attended an out of state or private school, but the course descriptions are the same or similar to the course at CI, please send us an email with your student ID, transfer course information, course description, and CI course information so we can review it for a possible course equivalency. So course substitution. So if our office cannot determine a course equivalency, you may be advised to pursue a course sub. So a course substitution is typically for a course that is not articulated and the course descriptions are not the same, but you feel the course is similar enough that it should satisfy a prerequisite. So to begin the course substitution process, you will need to contact your faculty advisor, also referred to as your major advisor or program advisor, you can find the faculty advisor schedule by searching faculty advisor in the search box from the homepage. The first link that comes up will take you to the web page where you can access the faculty advisor schedule. You'll find a list of the majors and their respective faculty advisors along with their contact information. So you'll need to have documentation that can support your request like a course description or a syllabus and send that to your faculty advisor so they can review your request. If they approve your request, they will submit an electronic advising request on your behalf to us. It will take our office about one to two weeks from the time that we receive the request to make the update in your transfer credit report or your car. And then once we've processed your course substitution, you and your faculty advisor will get an email from our office. So after your course substitution is approved and processed, you can resume registering for the course that you need. Any questions? I know we have quite a few, so. I know we've got a lot in uh, like the question and answer in chat. So I was thinking, let me try to make sure we get through everything. I'm gonna go through the, the Q and A that's already out there to make sure that we've got everyone's question answered. So let's see. Um, and there was one clarification about transcripts if you have um, fall coursework in progress. So if if you're granted approval from the admissions office to use fall 2020 coursework for admission purposes, you do need to submit that official transcript no later than January 4th because that's tied to admissions. Um, if you've cleared your admission and you're just taking additional coursework or maybe even prerequisite coursework in the fall, we do actually post those in progress courses. So if we have your transcript that we received in October and it shows in progress courses for fall, we're still going to post that to your record and that should actually still clear your prerequisites. Um, so hopefully that helps kind of clarify the transcript question. Um, 
There's a question, when will transfer students obtain access to CAR and Canvas portal from CI? Um, the CAR is within CI records and you should already have access to that because that's going to be within your student center. So the same place where you um, may check your admission status, that's also where you can view your, your advisement report. And then there's a question um, about classes being transferred over from another CSU and just showing as basically elective credit transfer credits. So I'll take over on that one. So classes from another CSU um, that sometimes you'll probably see those come over as just Tran LDT or Tran UDT, don't panic. When we do go through those, when we do your transfer credit evaluation, we'll go ahead and actually give them the proper GE or equivalencies that you need for your major or minor. So we'll go ahead and do that when your um, evaluation comes up. As well as for prerequisite purposes, we're going to go through and then make sure that we, you get those squared away so you can register in your classes. And then next question. Um, oh yes, register, registrar. So the we're called the registrar's office, um, but obviously when you're registering for classes, it's just register. Um, there's a question, I'm a business major and have been accepted for spring 21 upper division transfer. Um, advised, so there's a sp specific course that was advised to receive, oh, a W on your transcript. Um, Honestly, a W for, for, from an academic perspective, it does not impact your GPA. Uh, the only area that you would wanna, and especially from a transfer credit in perspective, it's not gonna affect, um, if it's not an admission requirement, a withdrawal is not going to affect your admission status or your transfer credit status. Um, the only times Ws you, you might wanna, if you're receiving financial aid, um, that's something to consider and you'd wanna talk to an, a financial aid counselor. Let's see, um, update the car yourself or done through us. So any updates to your advisement report is gonna be through us. Um, and then, so we, we will make sure that that's updated soon. Again, part of the, part of the goal of this, of this webinar is just to, to let you know that there, there is, it does take some time to do evaluations. And again, our goal is to make sure that specific courses are there for you to make sure you can enroll and then also work with advisors to, to plan your, your progress. Um, obviously the short-term goal is to get you enrolled for your first semester classes. And then it, you do have the opportunity to meet with advisors after orientation, right? That's not your only opportunity to meet with advisors. That's just to get your foot in the door, get some advisement, help you get enrolled for those first semester classes. Um, but they do have additional appointments that you can make. And especially during your first term, they do a lot of appointments for first term, um, first term students. So I don't know if I wanted to turn it over to Melissa and Rachel to get more of the chat questions. Sure, I can take some of them. Um, so I see just the, the one that just popped up. Um, when should you email us about prerequisites? Um, beyond the 17th. Um, it's going to be the focus of the registrar's office and our evaluators to review students for prerequisites prior to those appointments beginning. But if your appointment is getting close and you haven't seen any updates, or maybe it's a day or two after and you're having trouble enrolling in something because a prerequisite hasn't been updated, that's when you want to do it. Um, we ask that you um, give us that week to do our best and update those for you as, as soon as we can. But if you know it's been a day or so after that then please reach out to us um, we wouldn't want it to go on any longer than that um transfer students eligible to register for classes uh starting on the 17th and that should be in your student center um soon but the information is also available online if you search the registrar's office um, registration information is available online and let me see there was a question I just wanted to um, give my answer out loud via um, audio instead of just in the chat. A student had a question about the 70 unit limit, if it applies to the totality of your community college units or if it's um, for each institution individually and it is the total. So whether you have one community college or you have five, um, the 70 unit applies to all of that. So 
Um, it's just that 70 maximum towards the 120. Uh, um, so the shopping cart appointment, the validation appointment does allow you to um, kind of like Melissa went over, I believe, to, to do that sort of mock enrollment to see if you are going to have any prerequisite issues. You can do that now, Chloe, question mark. Validation, not quite yet. So those okay. will be available next week. And I do see a lot of questions about orientation versus registration. So we are opening up your registration window a few days before your actual uh, orientation date. So you have the option to enroll before orientation, but you're not required to. So let's say you go through, you are gonna have access to a advisement course starting November 9th. So after you go through the online advisement course and online orientation, if you feel like you have sufficient information to start adding courses, you can do so um, for upper division transfers on the 17th. And then you can just fill out your schedule with an advisor during the sessions. And the reason we tried to do this um, is just so you have a little more time and because there is limited time with the advisors during orientation. So if you, if you feel like you want to add some classes ahead of time, and remember, you're not locked in. Let's say you add a few courses and you meet with an advisor and you find out those are not the ones that you particularly need, or maybe that's not the correct order, you can drop and add another course. So it's not, um, you know, you're not locked in if you're to enroll early. So that's just uh, an option for, it to, for you. Um, a question on how do we access the advising course? That's going to be through, through your MyCI portal, through CI Learn. So the vendor is Canvas. And that is, um, I believe orientation is sending out that information, but that Canvas course is supposed to be available November 9th. So it's not quite available yet for you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to clarify the registration and orientation because I know that it makes sense to be tied together, but we are giving you that opportunity to enroll early. Great, I'm just scrolling through. Um, could folks, if, if anybody has a question that did not get answered um, either through um, the information in the slides or the questions we just answered, um, just I would appreciate maybe if you tossed it back up again. Um, just so we, we don't wanna miss anybody um okay so somebody's unable to attend orientation um oh sorry i'm reading her question it's a paragraph um students unable to attend um orientation can they attend the lower division orientation um I you would want to reach out to the orientation staff if you do need an accommodation for an orientation date, you would want to reach out to orientation directly and give them your situation and to and to see what kind of options they're available. They they tend to do if someone is un unavailable for a specific date, they do tend to accommodate students. So, but I would recommend reaching out to orientation directly. Thank you, Colleen. And the same for um, there's been sort of similar questions. How do I know if I registered? How do I know what my date is? Um, reach out to the orientation staff. They're really great about, you know, like Colleen said, either being able to accommodate a different date or they can let you know what they have in their record. And if you just go to the homepage and search orientation um, up in the top right in the search box, you'll get their website if you're not familiar with it already. And then, um, okay, Alexander, Alexandru, I'm sorry, I didn't see your original question. If you could please um, type it in again, that would be great. Um, we saw some questions in the Q&A regarding like financial aid and student loans and things like that. So any, any questions that you might have about your awards or your loans or anything like that, go ahead and contact financial aid. They're really good about answering all of your questions. Um, their contact info is online. So if you just go to the homepage and then search financial aid, it'll pop up for you and you can reach out to them and they can hopefully get all that sorted out for you. Same thing with, I believe I saw something about the EOP program. You can go ahead and contact their program to see um, what options they might have for you with regards to um, joining their program. 
Okay, so Alex, thank you for reposting your question. Um, Alex's question, um, they're missing one course to get the ADT for biology. Um, is that required? Is it required for admission? No, not necessarily. Do you still want to complete it and submit it to us? That's entirely up to you. We um, have a pathway for students to, to earn their um, bachelor's degree within 60 units if they have that ADT. So that's an advantage, but it's not a requirement for, for admissions or graduation. Um, so Alex, if you wanna finish that, send us an updated transcript and we'll get your record updated to reflect that. And then um, there was another question about attending a private university and if old transcripts are required. Um, if I understand the question, let, let me address it in, in two parts. So if you attended a university or institution at any point in your, you know, your academic career, we want those transcripts. Um, that's part of the admission process. If you tell us you, you went somewhere, you know, we want to see what you did there. Um, in terms of determining course equivalencies, um, our evaluators are really skilled in hunting down those details in the rare events that we cannot. We will either consult with faculty and the faculty will make a decision or sometimes we even reach out to the institution itself. But most of the time, we can, we can find um, information um, one way or another, and we can assist you with a course substitution process if that is needed as well. Uh, um, so there was a question about CI Learn. Um, you shouldn't have access to, you shouldn't have anything in CI Learn yet. Um, that's a tool some of your instructors will use in conjunction with their class assignments. You know, it might be a place where you can go in and submit assignments or, or check your grades or things like that, but not all instructors use it and you won't have that available until you're enrolled in classes that do choose to use it. Um, okay, let's see. For UDGEC, um, upper division GE are very specific classes. There are three upper division classes in area G, area B, uh, one in C and one in D, and those are taken at Channel Islands. So it's possible it could be taken at another CSU, but for most of you, you're going to need to enroll in those at Channel Islands. All right, um, Melissa, would you mind hopping in real quick um, so I can scroll? Yeah, for sure. So um, let's see. So yes, uh, you should be getting, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you should be getting the opportunity to speak to an advisor during orientation. And then um, you can also contact them as well. Um, you can contact their office, but you should be able to get that guidance that you need during orientation. And then once um, we have done, done your transfer credit evaluation, then you can also just schedule an appointment to see what else you've got going on and what other requirements you need specific for your degree. And then just for ease, I know we're going to go through the chat and the Q&A. Just for ease, can folks start using the question and answer function and then we'll just like we'll get through the chat questions. How about this? How about we get through all the chat questions and then um, if we can start using the question and answer feature, then we can just look in one place because I think we're popping back and forth and we would just want to make sure that everybody um, gets their question answered in the time. So Melissa, if you want to try to get through the, some of the chat questions and then for additional questions, if folks can put throw it in the question and answer box. So um, I see a lot of questions about the Zoom link for the orientation. Um, orientation sent out that email to students. So you should have received something. If you haven't received something, you can contact orientation and they should get that to you. Um, they can get that to you. So I see a lot of those. Um, and then also for lower or upper division orientation, you can contact them and then see, they can tell you which one you registered for, or if you need to change, they can probably help you make that change. 
So um, I believe this might be along the same lines as the AAT or AST question earlier. So even if you're already a continuing student at CI, so if you start in the spring, if you at some point get your AAT or AST, you finish that up, just go ahead and send us a transcript um, showing that your degree has been awarded and then we will go ahead and place you on that pathway. So you can send that to us, let's say next summer or next fall, whenever you get that done. So that's still an option for you. Don't see, let's see. If anybody else sees any questions, any other questions, they please pop in. Yeah, we're just skimming right now, make sure that we got everyone addressed. Let's see. Um, there's some general questions just about trying to find the car in your CI records. Um, if there's something, typically when you click on your CI records, you will automatically be directed to a student center. And that's, um, there is a drop down, probably one of the quicker ways is to do a drop down menu and it's called CI academic requirements report. And then keep in mind all of these things that we're referring to, a transfer credit report, the CI academic requirements report, we all have user guides on our website. So if you look up our, our registrar's office website, which we have we have our contact information up right now. So if you go to that web, we do have um, how-to guides and tutorials for all of these that we have talked about. So the transfer uh, credit report, the CI academic requirements report, we have tutorials on all of that on our website. Um, and again, I just want to say, if, um, if you're not sure of your orientation date, you forgot, you don't remember if you did it at all, um, anything like that, any questions about orientation, the schedule, you know, what's, what's going to happen, what to expect, um, the orientation staff um, have all of that good information and you can find their website by just um, searching orientation from our homepage, but I can also include that link in the chat box if that would be helpful for anyone. I went ahead and included the email. So their okay. email is just orientation at cseci.edu. I included that in the chat box for everybody. Okay, perfect. And then if, if anybody who's done or doesn't have any questions, feel free to log off. Um, There's lots of questions on finding out your orientation date. Um, I believe it was just today that orientation sent out an email. So be sure to check your email. If you do have questions, you can follow up to that address that um, Melissa put in the chat. And again, another question about enrolling during their orientation date. Uh, date. You do have time to enroll while you're while you're with uh, within the advising session, um, but we do open your window ahead of time, and your window is after. Basically, you can enroll up until the semester begins, so you have lots of time to enroll. Um, and yes, you you can consult an advisor on what classes to take. That will happen. You'll get some general information through your Canvas course. Um, you'll be consulting with advisors during your advising sessions at orientation, and you do have the opportunity to, to touch base with advisors after as well. Um, there was a question about getting the single subject teaching credential. So if I'm not sure if you're referring to the liberal studies integrated major, um that might be it i mean you can still be political science and then after that go on to get your credential after you've obtained your ba but if you are referring to that liberal studies integrated program um you can go ahead and contact the program chair for more information of liberal studies and then we can go ahead and type that in the chat box for you if you would like that email address and name if you want more information about that specific program, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you were referring to.
Um, I saw another good question on transcripts. Um, so if let's say, you know, if you're taking something in fall, do I need, do you need to resend after fall 20 is over? Yes, eventually we do need those transcripts with final grade because right now we'll just be posting in progress credit and that may or may not meet a specific requirement. So once grades are posted for fall 2020, you'll do, you will want to resend a transcript. like everyone's exiting out so if you do have more questions obviously our contact information has been up for a bit so if you have any questions about evaluations or transfer credit um this is how to contact us in our hours for the registrar's office and um we'll go ahead and exit this webinar again feel free to reach out to us you again you'll be getting more information at your orientation and advising sessions uh, so if you didn't get questions answered here, please reach out to us and you can also ask the same questions at orientation. So thank you so, far, so much for attending. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.